I know that a lot of people had a pr- lot of problems coming back from their half-term holiday breaks using uh, the airports. Um, well, as you know, I mean, you certainly should be back by now on Tuesday the 7th of June, especially if you are due in school. But the problems continue, which will no doubt be impacting anyone that's heading around, business travellers, uh, those that are making a little short trip. Obviously, you know you're going to get a cheaper flight if you go on a Monday or a Tuesday or Wednesday. It's always busy at the weekends. We knew that. But sadly... The problems are persisting. British Airways has cut 124 flights from London Heathrow. They say that customers were told in advance. Not sure if that just really satisfies you. EastJet and Wizz Air affected as well. Um, In particular, it seems to be um, Gatwick and Heathrow at the moment with the same old problems of simply uh, either bad weather, maintenance issues or staffing issues. Um, Let's get the latest. Joining me now to live to discuss this. On LBC News, a regular on the programme, delighted to say Julia Lobusaid, who's the CEO at the Advantage Travel Partnership, is here. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Jim. I must add, you are the UK's largest network of travel companies. So, what are you... I mean, I think we've gone over this a few times on various programmes. We, we know that they're trying to get the staff back that were lost during the pandemic... There's the problem, of course, of other some people not wanting to come back after how they were treated and or they're not security cleared and trained. When is this problem going to stop? Will we have a summer? Good afternoon. Jim, well, we absolutely will have a summer. And, and thankfully, in the vast majority of cases, people will travel, flights will depart, they'll come back and there'll be no problems whatsoever. Clearly, that it does not help anyone or no consolation for anybody that has had to experience a significant delay or cancelled flight over the last week or so. Mm. Um, but um, but the, but there are some of the things you mentioned there. Some of the issues that the industry is facing with are is the reality. Like many other economic sectors across, you know, not just in travel, mm. we're experiencing significant um, labour shortages. The industry was shut down, if you remember, effectively for two years. Um, furlough ended in September. Restrictions. Um, East in the UK, come back into the UK end of March. Um, that was only 11, 12 weeks ago. So there's a huge amount that needs to happen to get the industry back up to where it needs to be. And, and so many moving parts. Um, but we will we will get there. It, the airports have eased, actually. So the, the queues at some of the airports, have we've seen those eased. Obviously, half term is over. Jubilee weekend created more pressure. Um, but we're absolutely doing everything right across the ecosystem, being the best place possible for, for the peak summer months. Is there any advice we can do to try and combat the congestion? I'm thinking about flying times, when to arrive at the airport and destinations yeah. and which airport. Definitely. So I, I think, unfortunately, um, in the heat of the moment, it's very natural to want to get to the airport many, many hours before schedule. Um, it, the airport's just not advising that because all that's happening is there's a bottleneck for flights that are departing earlier. Um, and if a flight's been cancelled, you've got more people at the airport creating more congestion. Um, so actually arriving many, many hours before a flight is not advisable. Um, if you can, not always possible. I can't ever do it, but you can only travel with hand luggage that's that me. will help you that's me <laughs> that, that will definitely help you much easier as you know to, to get yeah, seamlessly straight you'll go, in. Uh, i was out straight through in. i had set up i was in a lovely spanish island and i came back via gatwick in west sussex london's gatwick and i was off that plane i was one of those you know <clears throat> one of the hand luggage uh situations and i was straight through, there was nobody <laughs> i just thought this is weird <laughs> there was nobody at all at border control as in there were people there to check my passport there's no queue whatsoever and because I didn't have to get wait for the luggage. I was just straight out. I couldn't believe I was on the train to London. I was like, then I came back in. I was reporting how bad it was. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, actually, I flew out last Monday to Spain and I flew from Stance at six o'clock in the morning, mm. went through, no problems. Got to, I was hand luggage only as well, went through, no problems whatsoever. So, but again, it, it doesn't help when you're when you're faced with those when troubles. When you've got kids, um, I, when you've got toddlers, oh, I mean, you, yeah. know, I, you know, when you're going for two weeks and you've got the children, you're going to need, you can't do hand luggage. You can't, no, it's, and it's not always possible. And, and you shouldn't have to choose, really. But I guess it's for now, um, in, tr- in terms of trying to ease that congestion. But, but also check in online if you can. A lot of people haven't travelled for a number of years, maybe not feeling quite comfortable. Um, if you can get someone to help you to check in online so you're not having to, you're not creating even a further bottleneck at the airport, that will just help mm. help you make sure that you've got all your documentation in check before you get there. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that's another thing, because at Gatwick, I thought were amazing at the security um, thing, uh, because you, you were told by this machine to 
to go and stand on the footmarks, which were very well trained to do that with all the COVID stuff. And then as soon as that person moves, you grab the tray and you put your stuff in. What really annoys me is the people that are surprised when they get to that section and they're like, oh, oh, I've got to take my belt off and my earrings off and my shoes. It's like, you should have done that in the queue bit. Yeah, I think a lot of people have forgotten. I mean, yes. I, I really do. And I, I think when you, when you're, if you haven't flown during the pandemic, that's you, that's three, yeah, that's nearly enough. maybe three years. Mm. So um, I think we just need to try and educate everyone. What, what are things to do? Try and create to, to get rid of some of those bottlenecks. Yeah, and we need to be kind and patient to our fellow travellers and best behave. Um, do we know whether it's worth looking at people getting in touch uh, for compensation if they are delayed? Because I know that you have a contract with the airline, but um, it's the, it's actually the airport itself that is in charge of the security so you know if you're held up because of security it's not literally the airline's fault it's not i'm afraid no so um any issues in relation to the airline um specifically and and can and delays and cancellations as a result of the airline then then you are entitled to compensation um i've seen it many times if you're if you're about to board a flight and you're running a bit late just try and get yourself through security. Most people are quite kind and do let you through uh, and also get the attention of security guards because they're, they're generally very good at uh, dealing with customers who mm. have been caught up and, and running a bit late. Well, and I know I shouldn't really ask, but I'm going to ask this one. I mean, uh, do I go to Menorca? I love Spain. I love Paella. I know you can get it here in restaurants, but I really <laughs> want to go to Menorca in August. Is that wise? Of course it is. Absolutely. Um, I'm, off to, I'm off to Turkey in four weeks' time and I absolutely cannot wait. So, yes, definitely worth it. Well, I think we've annoyed a few people there, Julia, with our, <laughs> with our holidays. I'll tell you what, I've saved up for many, many months for the opportunity. Thank you so much. We'll speak again soon. Uh, Julia Lowe. Abu Saeed is the CEO of the Advantage Travel Partnership, which is the UK's largest network of travel companies.